And my father was a, a chief warrant officer in the Navy. Uh, he was killed in an air crash in Panama on May 28, 1934. And uh, then we moved from Panama to San Francisco, San Francisco a year, and then uh, moved here to Coronado. So we already had that house in the back, and then my mother had this one built in 1938. So I entered uh, high school in 1936, and uh, started running in 1936, and kept on for 51 years. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, graduated from Coronado High in 1940, and then went to San Diego State for two years, uh, ran there on an air track team, <clears throat> engine, I was in the engineering department, and then uh, joined the uh, uh, airborne forces in uh, 41, and uh, went to Camp Dakota, Georgia for initial training, 13 weeks of training there, and uh, it was on Highway 13. 13 miles from the nearest cemetery, so that was kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and we uh, finished 13 weeks of training there, basic stuff. Uh, then Fort Benning, Georgia for four weeks. We were in a superb physical condition. Anytime we made an error, we were kind of sassy then too, yeah. you know. 19 and 20 year olders who came from all of the United States. I mean, some of them were close to being a dirty dozen, if you know what I mean. You know, down deep they were, but they were kind of careful. So what made you choose the Army over the Navy? Because I didn't like the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Navy town. This is where aviation grew up, yeah. right here. Because uh, they were experimenting with uh, air mail from uh, Randolph Field, Texas to San Diego in 1930s, and they used uh, half of North Island was Army. They used that as landing, and I don't know what happened after that, but uh, that half of that landing field went into sagebrush and covered with rabbits. So we used to go out there and, and uh, uh, capture rabbits. They were worth 25 cents a piece. Yeah. So five of us had an old Model T sedan, <coughs> and uh, We'd go out there, get on that portion of the landing field, and charge the sagebrush. Rabbits would come out, and they were all jackrabbits. I mean, they were big things. And they would take the long leap in the air, and the head would turn, and they would look to see what was chasing them, and it was a Model T Ford. <laughs> so we had one guy as a driver, one on the front fender, one side, one, side, one on the other fender, the other side, and one on the uh, uh, spare part uh, tire. And as soon as we got the rabbit going, the guy on the back would drop off and sit on the rabbit warren because it's gonna, he's going to come back there sooner or later. The two guys on the front fenders each had polo mallets. And you know what well, we did that and <laughs> charge a rabbit and, and play polo with them. So. <laughs> yeah, I was one of the richest kids in the city at 25 cents a rabbit. Yeah, yeah that's a lot of... A lot Captured of uh, gophers right in that lot in front here. <laughs> And uh, geez, I, was, I could take any group of kids to the uh, theater and see Buck Rogers and, and all these characters and, and buy them lollipops. And, and uh, then they, because of the track workouts, it kept me late. And some of the guys, somebody was raiding my traps. I was losing money. So you take the, the uh, uh, gopher to the fire station, bang on the pole, and the fireman slides down. You give him the gopher. He gives you a little metal shit, and you take the city hall and get your 25 cents. But uh, since I was, uh, <coughs> traps were being raided, uh, I would take what I had uh, captured, bang on the pole, etc., give me 25 cents, and he, the fireman, would go to the back and throw the uh, gopher in the trash can. I'd go around and get the gopher again, and do it a second time. <laughs> that was working pretty good. I was making up the money I lost, 
until they finally cut one leg off the gopher. Oh. And then, <laughs>